In this video, we're going to look at lesson 11.4 on standard deviation. The essential question that we'll be answering is why does the way in which data are spread out matter? This first example is a review of making a histogram like we did back in 11.1. So I've already filled this out. I just want to talk through with you the shape of this graph. So here we have the makers of a certain brand of light bulb claim that the average life of the bulb is 1,200 hours. I went ahead and made a histogram for the data using intervals of 50. I found my lowest number of 1080, my highest number of 1345, and I counted by 50s. So I started at 1050, I went up to 1300, and then I went ahead and I tallied each of the intervals and created this histogram here. Notice that this histogram is pretty symmetrical. It's not perfect, but it's roughly symmetrical. We have that hill shape curve like so. The mean of this data distribution I calculated to be 1,200, and because it's symmetric, the mean and the median are going to be equal to each other. Data that forms that perfect symmetric curve, like we've seen many times, is said to be a bell-shaped curve. So think of a bell like the Taco Bell bell. So we have a bell-shaped curve for symmetric. Data in that shape is also said to have a normal distribution. And when data is normally distributed, the most useful measure of spread is standard deviation. Standard deviation is defined as a measure that shows how data vary or deviate from the mean. So whenever data forms this bell-shaped curve, we call it a normal distribution, and the best measure of spread is going to be the standard deviation. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to calculate standard deviation first by hand and then using a graphing calculator. Before we jump to calculating standard deviation, let's just talk a little bit more about a normal distribution. Normal distributions are set up so that data is always within a certain percent or a certain number of standard deviations from the mean. So you can see here in this graph, I have my mean. For a normal distribution, the mean is always the middle of the graph. We can abbreviate the mean with this mu symbol, it's a Greek letter, or we can use the x bar that we've used before. Either way, the mean always goes in the middle. And then you can see here I have plus one standard deviation, plus two standard deviation, plus three standard deviation, and then I went three standard deviations on the other side. When data is normally distributed, 68% of the data is within one standard deviation of the mean. If we go out to two standard deviations, we now have 95% of the data is two standard deviations from the mean. And finally, if we go out three standard deviations, we have nearly all of the data, 99.7% of the data is within three standard deviations of the mean. This is called the empirical rule, and we're going to study this more carefully in our next unit. For now, I want you to just understand that when data is normally distributed, you can tell how close something is to the mean using these percentages. To calculate the standard deviation of a sample, we can do it by hand or we can use a graphing calculator or Desmos. I'm going to show you how it's done by hand. I will say that it is pretty pretty extensive. It's kind of complicated. You will never need to calculate it by hand. You'll always be able to use a graphing calculator or Desmos. So bear with me while I show you how it's calculated and just know that to save time and to make it easier for you, you will always be able to use either a graphing calculator or Desmos for any assignments or quizzes that you do in this class. So here I have a table showing the number of cars sold by an auto sales associate over an eight week period. So you can see there are eight numbers there and we're gonna calculate the standard deviation, which is a measure of spread. To calculate the standard deviation, you're gonna use the formula S of X, that is the sample standard deviation, and that is equal to the square root of, this symbol here, the Greek letter sigma, it means sum of, and then X minus X bar squared divided by N minus one. So it looks super complicated. Now remember that X bar is just the symbol for mean. So to break this up, I'm gonna make a table here to help us first find X minus X bar squared. 
The first thing that you would need to calculate would be the mean. To find the mean, that's just the average, so I added up those eight numbers, and then I divided by eight and got the mean to be 17. Once you have the mean, that's your x bar, and again, the first part of that formula was just to take x minus x bar. The x is the data value, so I've listed the eight data values here, and to start, you're just going to subtract. So we would go ahead and do 18 minus 17, and that's one. 25 minus 17 would be eight. 18 minus 17 is 1. 10 minus 17 is negative 7. And you do that for the whole chart. Once you have x minus x bar, then you're going to square them. So I'm going to go ahead and square 1. 1 squared is 1. 8 squared is 64. 1 squared again is 1. And negative 7 squared is 49. After you've completed that for all eight values, you're going to end up with a table that looks like this. Now to find S squared, which is the standard deviation squared, this is the mean of the squares of the differences. So really you're just looking at the X minus X bar. Remember that sigma symbol meant to add these together? So we're just going to add these all together. And that is 124. And then we're going to divide that by n minus 1. Remember, n was the number of data values. We had n equal to 8, and 8 minus 1 was 7. So when you do that, you get 124 divided by 7, which is 17.7. That is s squared. The last step was take the square root of everything. So take a square root of 17.7. We have 4.2. So that is what we call our standard deviation. The standard deviation will be 4.2. Remember, though, that these numbers refer to the number of cars that a salesperson sold. And you can't sell 4.2 cars. So you want to round that to the nearest whole number, which is about four cars. So we'll say that the standard deviation is about four cars. Now, remember, the mean that we calculated earlier was 17 cars. So if the sales associate was to sell within one standard deviation of the mean and one standard deviation is four cars, you can find the values that is by taking 17 minus four to get one standard deviation below the mean, that's 13, and 17 plus four, which is one standard deviation above the mean, and that's 21. So the sales associate would sell between 13 and 21 cars. Remember that standard deviation can be calculated using a graphing calculator. I wanted to show you one calculation here by hand so that you could see where standard deviation comes from. But from now on, you're going to use a calculator or Desmos to find the standard deviation. Since most of us have iPads, the easiest graphing calculator that we can use right now is Desmos. So I've written down the steps here to find standard deviation using Desmos. Go ahead and pause the video and write down these four steps. I will walk you through how to put this into the Desmos calculator in the next example. For now, just make sure that you have paused the video and written down all four of these steps. I also want you to circle or put a star by to find the standard deviation of a population. When we find standard deviation using a graphing calculator, I want you to find the standard deviation of a population. We abbreviate that as sigma of x. That's this Greek letter here, sigma of x. And on Desmos, we need to use the command stdevp. The one that we just calculated by hand in the previous example was the standard deviation of a sample. Desmos can also calculate that, but for the next examples, we are going to use the standard deviation of the population. So make sure that you click on or type in the correct command, the one that I've circled there, to find the standard deviation of a population. Before we look at calculating standard deviation with Desmos, let's talk about why do we need standard deviation. Here we have two sets. Set A contains the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and set B contains the numbers 1, 1, 3, 5, and 5. Now both of these sets have a mean of 3, and both sets also have a range of 4. But one set is more spread out than the other. 
And standard deviation can help us see that. If we calculate the standard deviation of the population for the first set, we would get, when we type it into Desmos, standard deviation of the population, we would see that it's 1.41. I'm going to round to two decimals, so 1.41. Set B has a standard deviation of 1.7888. I'm going to round to two decimals again, so 1.788 is going to round up to 1.79. So that tells us that set B is more spread out from the mean because it has that higher standard deviation. Remember that Desmos can give us two values for standard deviation. It can give us both the standard deviation of the population and of the sample. We're going to be looking for the standard deviation of the population. So that's the STDEVP in Desmos. I also showed the standard deviation of the sample just for fun. So you could see that no matter which measure we look at, you can still see that with this one being 1.58 and this one being two, that set B is more spread out from the mean. Now we're ready to find the standard deviation of a population. The table here displays the number of points scored by a football team during each of the regular season games. And we want to use Desmos.com to calculate both the mean and the standard deviation of the data set. Open a web browser and go to www.desmos.com. Once you get there, click on the blue graphing calculator button. Then in the lower left corner, click on show keypad. Move to the functions button, click on stats, and then you'll see that there's a button right here for mean. Now I can just type my numbers in the list. So 24, comma, 13, comma, and I'm just copying these numbers from my notes booklet. And when you're done, you can hit enter and it will give you the mean of the data set. Now to get the standard deviation, we can go to that same button, functions, click standard deviation of the population. So make sure you pick the one that has the P at the end. It's on the left side here, STDEVP, and we need the same list of numbers. Since I already typed them up here, you can just copy and paste. So I'm going to highlight that copy and paste and hit enter and there we have our standard deviation of 7.335 which would round to 7.34. You will have a few problems in your homework where you'll need to calculate the standard deviation using Desmos. So let's end this lesson by comparing data sets using standard deviation. The histograms show the lifespan of a sample of two light bulbs from two companies. The first shows a sample from brand A and the second shows a sample from brand B. The red line indicates the mean and each standard deviation from the mean. So you can see that both light bulbs have a mean of 1,200 hours and the mean is this red line. Let's compare the distributions of the lifespan for the two light bulb brands. And we're gonna compare both the shape, the center, and the spread. Let's start with the shape. Brand A is a normal distribution. Notice it's that symmetric curve. Brand B is skewed to the right. Again, notice that the tail of the graph is off to the right, which means that the mean is gonna be larger than the median. So there we've described the shape. Now let's describe the center. Both brands of light bulbs have an average lifespan of about 12 hours or 1,200 hours. You can see that right here. So for center, I'm gonna use mean. As far as spread goes, we're gonna look at the standard deviation. Notice how brand A has a standard deviation of 75.5 hours but brand B has a standard deviation of 90.25 hours, which shows brand B has a larger spread. One thing to note too, is when a spread is larger, when the standard deviation is larger, it's less predictable. 
So even though they both have an average lifespan of 1,200 hours, it would be better to pick a light bulb from brand A because since the spread is less, you're more likely to get a light bulb that's closer to that average lifespan. So that's how standard deviation can help us compare data sets and how we can find it using either a graphing calculator or Desmos. So thanks for watching. Bye. The information that we go through for the rest of this video is not in your notebooklet. So I need you to add it to the end of your notes. If you flip to the back of your blue booklet, there are some extra blank pages. In this unit, we have covered a variety of different measures of center and spread. The three measures of center are mean, median, and mode. Remember that the mean is the average of the data values. The median is the middle value when the data is put in order from least to greatest, and the mode is the most common value. Mean, median, and mode are all considered to describe the center of a data set. We've also looked at three different measures of spread, range, standard deviation, and interquartile range. Remember that the range is just the difference between the maximum and minimum values. The standard deviation we've covered in this lesson, and that's a measure that tells us how the data varies from the mean. And then we talked at the beginning of this unit about interquartile range, which is the range of the middle 50% of the data, and that's Q3 minus Q1. So these three measures, range, standard deviation, and interquartile range, can all be used to describe how the data is spread out. Make sure you add this to your notes because you are going to need to know the difference between measures of center and measures of spread for your homework assignment and for the test. Now let's look at what happens to measures of center and measures of spread when we add a constant to all the data values in a set. This example you'll need to add to your notes. Here I've listed the prices of seven sweaters. And I'm going to calculate the value for the mean, the median, and the mode. We'll use Desmos to help us with the mean, but for median, since our data is already in order, we can go ahead and find the middle number here in our list, which is 25. So the median is 25. Remember, the mode is also just the most common data value. So here, the only value that appears more than once is 25, so we would have a mode of 25. For the range, we can also do that by hand pretty easily. Remember, the range is just the maximum minus the minimum. So we would take 40 minus 15 and get 25. Let's use Desmos to find the mean and the standard deviation. Go to desmos.com and click the graphing calculator button. Then, if you want to get the mean, you can go back to the keypad like we did in the previous example and find those functions. But now that we know the commands, you can also just type in the word mean and then list your values in parentheses separated by commas. So 15, comma, 18, 20, 25, 25, 30, and 40. Then once you're done, hit enter, and there's our mean of $24.71. To get the standard deviation of the population, since we know what the command is for Desmos, we can just type STDEVP and then list the numbers. Since I already typed them once, I'm just going to copy and paste. So highlight, copy is control C, and then paste is control V. Hit enter, and we can see that our standard deviation of the set would be about 7.78. Now let's look at what would happen if we add a constant to each of those data values. Suppose that to order by mail, you have to add an extra $5 for shipping to the price of your sweaters. So to get our new prices, just take each of the previous values and add five. So the $15 sweater, when we add five to that, is now $20. 18 plus five is 23. 20 plus five would be 25. 25 plus 5 would be 30, and 30 plus 5 would be 35, and then 40 plus 5 would be 45. So here's our new data set. We've just taken the values from the previous set 
and we've added that extra $5 to each of the values. Now let's go ahead and calculate each of these five measures. Again, we're gonna do the median, the mode, and the range by hand. For the median, we can just find the middle number, which is 30. For the mode, we can find which one occurs the most often, which is also 30. For the range, we can just take the maximum value of 45, subtract the minimum value of 20, and 45 minus 20 is 25. Now we'll use Desmos to find the mean and the standard deviation. I'm back at Desmos.com and I'm going to calculate the mean first. To calculate the mean, you can either find the mean from the functions over here under stats or we can just type in the word mean and then a parenthesis and type your list of values for the new prices of sweaters. So 20, 23, 25, 30, 30, 35, and 45. Hit enter, and there we have our mean of $29.71. For standard deviation, we can either find it from the stats menu over here, STDEVP, click on that, or you can just type those letters, and then for my list, I'm just gonna copy and paste again. Hit enter, and there we have our standard deviation of 7.78. Notice how our three measures of center, mean, median, and mode, they all changed. The mean was 24.71. Now it went up to 29.71. The median and the mode were both 25. They also went up by five. For our range and our standard deviation though, these values were 25 and 7.8. Notice how our new value for range and standard deviation were the same. When you add a constant to each data value in a set, this pattern will always occur the mean, median, and mode are going to increase by that same number that you added to each value. But the range and the standard deviation, which are both measures of spread, are going to stay the same. Because if we're adding five to each of the values, they're still spread out the same way. Let's summarize this information. Again, you're going to need to add this to the end of your notes booklet. When adding a constant to every value in a data set, the mean, median, and mode of your new set change by the same constant. The range and standard deviation are going to stay the same. So your measures of center will change when we add a constant to each data value, but your measures of spread will stay the same. This means that if we have values for center and spread of an original data set, and we know that we're going to take each value and add a constant to it, we can calculate the new measures of center and spread using these shortcuts. For example, let's suppose that we have an original set and our original data set has a mean equal to five and a standard deviation equal to 1.38. To get our new data set, we're going to add 10 to each data value. If we add 10 to each data value, and we already know that the mean of the original data is five, because mean is a measure of center, we know it's going to change by the same constant. So our mean is going to go up by 10, so that our new mean would be equal to five plus 10, which is 15. But our standard deviation, which is a measure of spread, is going to stay the same. So our new standard deviation would still be equal to 1.38. This brings us to the end of Lesson 11.4. I hope that this video helped you understand what is standard deviation and how to calculate it using Desmos. Remember that you'll never need to do the calculation by hand. 
you will always be able to use Desmos to find standard deviation. Thanks for watching and good luck as you try some problems on your own. Bye.